Hey guys, my name is Octoman and this is a new tutorial series about how to create some kind of game like Risk. In Risk you're gonna have uh, several countries um, and several, um, yeah, yeah, countries you're gonna have to take over with your characters or with your, well, with your um, figures actually. And let's assume this one is maybe, um, yeah, any, any country or any continent actually, which is split it up in several countries. So what we can do is, or what we will create in the series is, we will create some kind of terrains, like here in Inkscape. We're gonna take them and use them, um, later on in Unity. I'm going to use Unity 5.6 for this one. And we're gonna make it so that the player is able to select any of those little terrains or um, countries or call it what, or territories and um, has the possibility to take those over during some kind of fight. Um, and also we're gonna go over and save all the data so we are able to put the data back when we need it. So when we are loading the game, for example, everything will be staying at that particular safe spot actually. So, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with Inkscape pretty quick and we create all of that terrains we're gonna be able to use. Um, we later on go in Unity again and tint all that stuff directly by code. Um, and also we're gonna arrange all this stuff in here directly um, in Inkscape so uh, there will be no overlappings later on in the PNG files and all the other stuff. So um, yeah, let's get started with that at first. So what I did, I just created a little outline in here for a, yeah, for a um, continent, for example. You can actually go in and you uh, create 100 of those. What I want to make sure is um, that I make this one as, yeah, as sexy as possible. That means I want to have this one pretty nicely looking. You can also go in and paint some little buildings in, uh, in, in cases of quads, for example, directly on it, because this will be underlaying our territories itself or our districts or our countries. It all depends a bit, of course, on the game you are creating. So let's assume this one is going to be a bit, um, greenish, maybe. We are not going to, uh, change the colors directly on this thing here and what I can do is I can actually go in and create some kind of buildings for example maybe just in black I can also go in um, and paint in some I don't know some trees and all the other stuff so I just go in and um, yeah do something in here and in there I want to make sure that in those countries is something actually which we can show off and maybe be interesting um, for the players to look at maybe um, also you can paint in walls, you can paint in, um, I don't know, seas and, and, and everything you like. And please, of course, uh, to create a nice looking map. So maybe if you like to have some water somewhere in the center, you can, of course, do so and create some water. You can make this one in 3D, you can do that in 2D. It's up to you. When you're going to create this one in 3D and map this one directly on a 3D object, make sure you don't have too much height. Um, so um, our later on created sprites actually are not going to overlap or actually underlap and so on and so forth. So you might want to go in and uh, create stuff a bit different. Same for the regions, the regions or the territories or whatever uh, need to have a big enough height so we are able to see those. When you're using this or creating this one in 3D, I will do all of that stuff to come now in 2D since this is a Patreon supported tutorial series which is requesting um, that this is going to be um, yeah, in 2D. So again, uh, what you can do is you can create some uh, rivers, seas, anything you like. And please, uh, you can fill in that one with colors. You can take away the outlines and all the other things and make this map actually looking good. Once you're happy with the result, you can, of course, um, create all the terrains to your please. Um, what you need to take care of with that, wherever I have them now. Oh, they're underlying, so I'm going to push this one down here. Uh, and this one needs to be uh, like this. Okay, so what we're going to have later on is all those terrains. You're going to create them just by using the, the Bezier Curve tool in this case. And what you want to make sure is that you all uh, all of that part actually are white in the center like this. You don't tint them. It's just for you for planning purposes. But you want to make sure that all that areas 
um, all the terrains or whatever you call them or districts are going to be white in the center because by code we want to change the color directly. Um, what you also want to do is that you are working as, yeah, let's say as clean as possible. Um, like I have some little issues here and there because I was just um, trying to get this one done as quick as possible. I just get rid of the BZ curve in this case. Um, doesn't let me. Okay, there we go. And you can, uh, again, you can be as precise as you like. You can take your time to create this map. I just wanted to make sure that everything is looking great, actually, or actually fits into that scene. So the next one is, um, you might want to take a picture of this one, a screenshot or whatever, so you do remember later on which piece or puzzle or whatever is going to take place later on. Um, so you can use a snipping tool directly from... Um, from Windows if you like to, if you have uh, Windows 7 and over, so you can actually just take that uh, this one as a picture and then just yeah, drag this one over to your other screen, for example. Um, so you later on have that maybe somewhere memorized where the, all the pieces are going to be. You can also make a screenshot uh, and put this one in your design document if you are in the early process of um, planning everything ahead and so on and so forth. The next one is the uh, most important one is we don't want to create any overlappings when we are actually exporting all that pieces. So what you want to do is you want to drag them um, of course away and not inside. I'm gonna pass over a helper guideline as you can see. You want to make sure that you're not in the big land actually or in the big country in this case. You want to yeah, take all of those pieces and make sure yeah, that you're not overlapping those. You can also um, yeah, organize those as you please and like. You can again use those helper grid lines in here, but you want to make sure that none of that uh, pieces are interfering the square or the rectangle um, directly from another piece next to it. So, and that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna take all of those and pass them or place them wherever we want of course but make sure that the rectangle selection of this one is not interfering any other of the selection pieces in here so again it doesn't really matter where you place them it's as long as you're not interfering like this one for example wouldn't work because it would overlay in here and maybe later on another would overlay in here so you have to put this at least to this possession. So again, it's up to you how you design it. I don't care about it, but as you can see, this one has a rather long rectangle, so we need to take care of that this is not interfering this. Again, the helper guidelines can help you with that um, if you need any yeah, visualization purpose, whatever. So you don't go and interfere any of the pieces all around. This one has a rather big one as well. When you drag this around, make sure it's not going to be inside any other uh, square actually once again. Same here. So because the sprite editor later on in Unity is going to cut off in rectangles and it's taking the most closest place actually when you, we go and auto cut all the pieces in here. Um, so we're gonna uh, I need to take care of this one. Okay, so everything is now set up for exporting. You can just go in and select all the pieces um, directly on uh, that by pressing Control A. But the problem is that the second um, layer in this case is not going to be selected. So I'm gonna use the rectangular selection directly over all the pieces I'm gonna have in here and go to PNG export. How big you want to export this um, actually on your own and you can export this directly inside your Unity folder of the project. I'm gonna do that pretty quick. You can say export as, then you want to um, choose the correct data path you're gonna put the data in. I'm gonna go into that pretty quick. I have a German lang uh, language overview so uh, well actually it doesn't really matter for you. Um, And um, what I want to uh, take actually is, of course, the path uh, where I have all my uh, tutorial stuff inside, uh, or actually this particular project. I'm gonna go into the tutorial and in the assets folder, and of, of course, you can rename this one to whatever you please, and I can save it like um, map. Then 
press space or, or actually press save then it will be automatically in the path you're gonna choose and then you need to press on export and this one will happen in here it will automatically export it directly into unity and we're gonna start um, going into this one as next so now we are in unity as you can see my map actually has been exported and it's a single sprite um, in sprite to the UI, but what we need to do is we need to change this one to multiple So we have the possibility to split all the pieces we are gonna have exported in here to several 100 other pieces that we like to so we press on uh, the sprite editor button press on apply And we should be able to um, auto slice all the data directly into that so we press on slice It's set to be automatic. We're gonna center all the pivot points uh, we're gonna delete of course existing ones and we press just the slice button what will happen in a, an eye blink and you might not see this one pretty good right now but as you can see when i select one of those islands in here they're gonna be cut directly as a square and as its maximum position same for this one in the center um, so this way we're gonna have all the pieces split it up directly and we don't have any overlaps because we exported this one correctly okay so what we now can do is we can drag all that data directly inside our game um, view actually and start to organize all that data in here all that images um, directly where they have to be so again you can uh, yeah, take over all your 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 copy from the snipping tool and place everything according to this one If you have a greater layout or bigger layout more of the terrains or territories Then of course make sure um, yeah, you fit all of that to your needs I'm gonna press the apply button in the top right. So everything we're gonna have done in here um, has applied correctly and all those uh, little sprites are actually in our sprites full in here you can also go in and rename all that parts for top left bottom left i don't know whatever or maybe you have country names um or territory names you want to pass over actually uh we're gonna do that later on anyways but you want to make sure that um yeah you you can actually automatically take that and yeah rename that to whatever the country name is make sure that you don't have any double names because this might be confusing for unity later on um, but what we can now do is we cr um, just actually go in and take map zero in this case Which is our plain country. We're gonna drag this one just directly in the hierarchy And as you can see it's a bit higher than we want that so I just go and scale this one down Until it's fit it's fitting my needs if you have a, a bigger card or map and you want to have more content inside of here Of course make sure and implement all of that stuff as well to your needs um, I'm currently in a, a 16 by 9 build in here so if you want to have a uh, portrait mode instead of a landscape mode of course feel free to do and yeah change this one to your needs again of course this is later on also everything we're gonna do here is um, yeah, possible to build directly for Android iOS or whatever you please like okay so we have um, implemented our our map in here we can also go in later on into the camera and change uh, for example the background image or you implement your own it doesn't really matter you can maybe do some or create some water texture or background which you can implement easily as well um, or even code something like uh, an ocean animation stuff and so on and so forth so it's up to you what you're gonna do with that you can always lighten this one up if you see or that you can see um, but actually it doesn't really matter for us at the moment I can also to make this one looking almost like my little season here maybe this so it will fit all of that but again this is design stuff we are not taking care of at the moment okay so uh, speaking of design we're gonna start with um, all the pieces we need those to overlay directly the yeah actually where they have to be so map one piece in my case I just dragged this one in as you can see it's too big I need to scale this one down holding down shift and uh, taking one of the corners um, will make me um, yeah be po uh, yeah will make me able to scale this one uh, with the corresponding aspect ratio actually to that particular image okay so uh, and now you need to be, to be a bit picky um, to 
make everything fit into your map otherwise it might not look good um this piece is actually going to this place so i need to reduce its size a bit as well and a bit more maybe so again you can see now it's about to fit in where how where and however i just created this one gonna take number three in here and fit this one in as well um maybe all of those will have the same scale so you might want to um, check if you can use the same scale variables for all the islands so you can just instantly copy and paste um, all the scaling directly on those so you basically double click this one for example and copy and pa pass all the scaling data directly in all x y and z um, to make this one fit easier maybe okay so I go over and uh, fill in the data uh, way more. Okay, so let's start to create some folders at first in our assets folder. So uh, we are not going to interfere all the other things. So we're gonna right click new folder and we're gonna want to create a scripts folder. And maybe for our map, we're gonna create a textures or sprites folder. It, uh, it is up to you how you want to rename it or name it as at all. I'm gonna call this one sprites since there will be uh, two more actually later on. So all the sprites are in the sprites folder now. We can always click in there and see if, see if this is really, uh, if it is correct and of course we have the scripts folder once we are on the scripts folder, we're gonna right click and create a new c sharp script and we call this one maybe uh, territory or country handler um country handler you can also name this whatever you like and please make sure you have something you remember later on what is going to happen when we're gonna work with the country handler and double click this one once it's open, we're gonna start to code everything for a mouse input or actually mouse check. When the mouse is actually over one particular ter territory, um, we are um, yeah we are hovering over with a mouse, and when we enter or leave this ma the, it with the mouse, we're gonna change some color values actually directly by that um actually we're gonna uh, yeah save this one while we are going to do so okay so but territory handler is also needing some um some more stuff for example when we want to click on a 2d object or sprite or call it whatever you like actually it's an object as well we're gonna when we want to have some clicking on them we need two more components directly on that. So otherwise, we are not able to uh, get this one noticing that there is a mouse over it. It's like with ray casting, for example. So what we need is we need some kind of collider 2D for this one. And we need, of course, a rigid body 2D. Otherwise, this is not going to react to what we are after. So what we're gonna do is we simplify that because we have to do, let's assume you have 100 uh, different areas and you don't want to go in and um, uh, create the data every time. We're gonna create an open close square brackets in the very top and we type in require component. So this, when we are dragging this one on any game object, it requires a specific component. And this component is going to be type of so a type of and in other parentheses we're gonna type in polygon collider to d so every time i'm gonna i'm gonna save this one i will show you this one on one of those pieces yeah so when i save this one and maybe have map uh, one in this case map zero is the outer one we don't want to affect this one but map one in this case the first area and here when i drag the country handler directly on it it will automatically create a polygon collider 2d on it that means if we later on go and pass all the country handlers directly to that, it will automatically create all the required components. Also, what you can see, a polygon collider is automatically taking the shape or the close shape um, to our particular region we just created. As you can see, it will be 100% or actually 
95% precise to our outline from the PNG file. When we gonna go to any of that pieces of, of that corner pieces and we gonna um, add it the collider with that little button, we can actually put everything to its needs. We can get rid of stuff, we can organize that, we can make this as close as possible if we'd like to. So if you have or, or if you are in the need of high detail or really close lying pieces in here so you don't have that gaps as I have, then you can always go in and uh, take the polygons actually and fit them to the needs of your map pieces. Okay, I don't go further into that because it's going to rob me more time than I want to, um, yeah, actually implement in that case. I just wanted to make sure that I have an easy possibility to take care of that. Okay, I uh, remove that component. Oh, I cannot because uh, Country Handler is actually still on it. So I'm gonna remove this one. I'm gonna remove this one. Same for the other one. And here I'm gonna remove, well, at first the Country Handler and the Polygon Handler. So let's get uh, more into coding. What we're gonna need is some colors. We're gonna pass over, um, we're gonna do the passing over the colors later on from another handler. But this one in here needs to store the old color so we can change this one according to whatever it is in. Also we need the connection to the sprite itself or in this case the sprite renderer. So we're gonna pa pass this one over at first. So we create a private variable of type sprite renderer. Uh, there we go. And we call this one just the sprite or sprite in this case. So what we want to do is in awake. So we um, type in void awake, open close parentheses and inside curly braces or brackets. We're gonna type in sprite. It's going to be equal to get component since the component is directly on it. Open close triangle brackets and inside we're gonna type in sprite renderer. Whoops, no typos. Sprite renderer and after the second uh, triangle bracket, open close parentheses and close the line with a semicolon. So instantly at start we get the connection or actually in awake already, we get the connection to the component sprite renderer directly on the object where this country handler um, class or script is going to be on. Okay, so the next one is uh, gonna get rid of uh, void uh, start and update. I believe we don't need those. Well, at least not at the moment. And I want to create uh, two new uh, two new functions at first, uh, which are Unity provided already. So in this case, it's going to be void on mouse enter. Open close parenthesis uh, curly brackets after this one, and we're gonna have a on mouse exit as well. On mouse exit. There are 100 possibilities. You can create all of that input stuff. You can create, um, I don't know, your own classes. You can use that or create this one with a raycast input and so on and so forth. But since we're gonna have to handle the regions or co countries on our own for its own, actually we're gonna or I gonna use mouse uh, on mouse enter mouse on mouse exit. Gonna zoom in a bit so you can see stuff better. So you want to make sure that is written correctly. Um, so everything in here, which uppercase is, otherwise you will not have the effect we are after. So what we can do is we can actually react uh, to whatever we want to when we're gonna mouse enter or when we're gonna mouse exit. It will automatically take care of where the mouse is, like a rate casting. I believe there's a rate casting algorithm directly behind it. Um, we have another one, but we're gonna take this one and make uh, sure of this one in the next video. But for now, I want to make sure that we have some color change maybe. So um, we want to pass over some colors at first. We wanna store them inside of some uh, private data or we can also later on go and make this one public, but I believe it's easier later on uh, to make everything private so we don't have direct access to it and let the system work with that. Um, but for now we can actually go in and create two more variables and for now we're gonna create them as public one. So and w what we're gonna have is we have some colors. You can also use color 2D and I believe we're gonna use color, uh, not 2D but 32 I mean. Um, and this is going to be just the name old color. 
Oh, uh, not this one. Old color. And we need another one, which is going to be maybe our start color. So public color 32. Um, I'm using color 32 because it has a direct access to um, uh, the transparency from that particular field. Um, so we can play around with the transparency and uh, use that for highlighting basically. So and uh, this is going to be our start color. Uh, no, not open close parentheses, just uh, a semicolon in the end. So what we can do is when we uh, go and enter this particular region with a mouse we are able to change the sprite and its color in this case to whatever color we want. In this case, we might want to take and use the start color. Um, or actually the old color. Well, it doesn't really matter. Let's use the start color. So the start color can be anything. We can uh, pass the data directly in the inspector and I will show you what's happening actually. And what we also want to make sure is that the old color is going to store the current color. And I believe we need to uh, flip this around. Well, yeah, we have to. Um, so what we need to do is we need to take care of that the old color is saved first. And the start color is going to be the one which is we are changing the current color inside. And on mouse exit, we're gonna do the same vice versa. But we just say that the sprite dot color, uh, sp no, not string, sprite dot color is going to be equal to the old color we just um, actually passed over in here. Uh, maybe we're gonna need to fiddle around with the uh, color names or we're gonna implement another one as well. Maybe a hover color in this case. Uh, public color 32. We need to fiddle around with that since, uh, well, yeah, it's a bit tricky. So, yeah, let's call this one hover color. Um, so instead of uh, the sprite color, we're gonna use the hover color in this case. And what we also want to do is add a wake or maybe in start, it doesn't, uh, well, actually, it doesn't really matter. Well, we want to make sure that the sprite dot color is going to be equal to the start color we're gonna set in the inspector. Later on, of course, we go and take care of this one um, from another pay, from another, um, yeah, from another side actually of the scripts. Okay, so let's save this one. What I want to do is I want to drag the script now, the country handler script on one of those pieces. Like this. What you can see, we're gonna have three colors in here. An old color, with, which is basically just a temporary color. The hover color we want to have and the start color. Let's assume we have a start color of red with maybe um, something like this. Um, this will be half transparent or almost half transparent in this case and it will be red and when you want to hover something we might want to highlight this so we can actually take this color code in here this hexa hexa code copy this one over go to the hover color pass this one over in here as well and increase maybe the density or the transparency so we're gonna have some kind of highlighting color in this case Let's see what's happening with that little setup. So when I press play, well, I don't see anything because this one needs to have another layer order. So I'm gonna give it a minus 10. Okay, so um, the main map in this case needs to be ordered in layer maybe down or lower than the other pieces. Otherwise, it's not going to be an overlay in this particular case. So as you can see, now we have some overlay in here. Um, this is now looking a bit orange, but the cool thing is we can see through it. So we can see, okay, there's something under it. And when we now are in the game view and I go over this one with the mouse, you can see it's going to blink or actually get in highlighted when I am um, over this particular um, yeah, field in this case. So you can check out if the polygon collider is going to work from any side. Even in this little gap in here, you should be able to um, see this one as everything is pretty much good working with, well, rather less or rather small um, amount of work in this case. 
So again, you want to or might want to go in and decrease the transparency of that field a bit more, uh, just to fiddle around what the best transparency pieces or transparency colors in this case are going to be. Otherwise, you also want to make sure that um, it is looking or actually is enough um, uh, and or not too much transparent, otherwise you might not be able to tint the area directly. If you don't need uh, the transparency part in this particular case, uh, you can also get rid of it and you just, uh, can just use full colors and you don't have any highlighting. Um, this might be in case of you want to use this one in Android or iOS because um, actually you don't hold your touch or your finger directly on the screen the whole time and go inside the area or swipe inside the area you want to select. Usually you just tap on it and then it is good to go. So again, it's up to you how you want to make this one uh, work in iOS or something. Um, but for PC, this could be a good way to show um, that you are currently highlighting this one when you are hovering over with the mouse. Okay, and that's everything for this little tutorial um, start. And we in the next part we go over and complete the complete stuff in here with a country handler. In this case, so we get, give it a more depth, depth and mm, a more functionality, of course. And we automate stuff here and there. We might want to create already some input, um, like when we click on a particular field that we want to get something happening inside. Thanks for watching the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thumb this video up if you like it and feel free to become my patron or donate by using PayPal to support me and my channel in the future. All links will be below in the description. See you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.